Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a simple high-low card game for PC and mobile in Unity and welcome to episode 11. In this tutorial we're going to deal a little bit with animations and we're going to create a little simple splash screen introduction for the game. Don't forget, click subscribe and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload on my channel on video game development because there's always loads to see, loads to learn and loads to do. With that in mind, let's get to work. So what is a splash screen introduction? Well, a splash screen introduction is a quick and simple way of kind of introducing the game, you know, showing what it's called, who made it. So you always see it when you play any type of video game, you know, it's like a, maybe a black screen and it fades in with the developer and publisher and that kind of thing. Um, so we're going to do something a little bit similar with this. I'm thinking maybe start with uh, a white screen and some text fades in, says high, low card game fades out and then we're into the game. So based on that as well, I think we're going to deal a little bit with the background music. Um, so basically I want it to only start when we are on this current screen. So when we're in the little splash screen, I don't want it to play at all. Now, the way we're going to do this, I'm just trying to get my headphones again there. So the way we're going to do this is we're still going to deal in the same scene and ultimately, we don't need to change scenes in all of this. You know, some games do have multiple scenes, but we don't need them in this one. So firstly, let's start by introducing the white background. So let's go to game object, UI, and let's go raw image. Uh, let's set the anchoring to stretch. And let's set everything to zero so it covers the entire screen. And remember what I've always said, the lower down it is in all of this then the most forward it becomes so if we were to press play now the game would function but we wouldn't be able to play it because this raw image is in the way so let's rename this raw image to splash image and let's also add some text so game object ui let's go with text let's have it dead center of everything so let's shift it to center maybe there uh, alignment center and i'll just have this called high low card game and you know that's just what i'm going to call it you can obviously call it something awesome you can make it look cool you can do other things i, I guess it's up to you like i say i, I always show you the mechanics you just work with it so let's have that like that. So what I'm going to do now is take the background music and I'm going to disable it. So I'm going to turn it off. So if we press play, this is all we see. So the game again still functions, just that we can't play because this is in the way. So now let's rename that text to say intro text. And I kind of like simplicity. That's why I've just gone for this white screen with that. I am a, a big fan of simplicity. So now, what do we do? Well, let's actually create some animations. So this intro text, I am going to set the color alpha zero. And you can see that's faded out there. So let's now create another folder in our assets. So right click, create folder, and we'll call this animations. And in here, this is where we're going to store the animations that do various different things. So we're going to go with a fading effect for that intro text to appear on our screen. So it'll fade in, fade out, and then we can begin the game. So we have the color set as zero on the alpha. So let's set it as 255 and then zero again. So what we need to do is click on the animation tab. And I think I mentioned it much earlier on um, that if you don't have it, you can click these little dots here, click on add tab, and you'll find animation right there. Next, we need to click on create, and we can call this one um, text fade, and click save, and you'll see this appear down here. First things first, we need to click this record button here. So we are now recording the animation, and these are all keyframes. You'll notice this one here is zero, and we're working in 60 frames a second, because I like 60 frames a second. And... So basically, the keyframe zero is the very start of it. So we need to set the current status of our text. Now, we're only dealing 
with the alpha to make it fade. So let's just set this. So all you need to do is click on the color, wiggle that around a bit and then set it back to zero. And you'll notice these little nodes appear here. We've now set the alpha on our text to zero to start off with. Next, what we need to do is after a second, so 60 frames, or you could actually click here to do one second. It's up to you. Uh, so after a second, we'll set the alpha to 255. Cool. So now it will display on our screen. So after another two seconds, we still want it to be there, but then we'll fade it out again. So what we'll do is we'll go two seconds from here. So 120 frames further from 60. So that's frame 180. And at that point, I am going to wiggle the alpha again and set it back to 255. The reason I've done that is because that then creates another one of these nodes further down the line. So after another 60 frames, another second, we're going to have the alpha set as zero. So by frame 240, we want the alpha to be back to zero and that will fade it out. Once we've done that, we can press the record button once again, and we've basically created that animation. Next thing to do is head back to the project window and you'll notice two new assets. One of them is the controller that controls everything uh, animation wise on an object and the other is the animation itself. Make sure we click the animation itself and then up here untick loop time. Reason being is we only want it to play the once. Let's see what it looks like now. High low card game. Fade out. Cool. So now let's make it so as this uh, splash image which is the white background also fades out after we have displayed that high low card game. So let's click on splash image. Let's click on animation once again, and let's click on create and we'll have splash fade. And let's press the record button once again. And remember we need to set that first keyframe and we're dealing with the alpha once again, because we're going to fade this out. So click on color. And down here on the alpha, you now just jiggle it around a bit so it flashes and then bring it to 255. So by frame 240 of our other animation, we had completely faded out. So let's go to frame 240 of this animation and we need to also keep it as 255. That way it remains white for the whole time that our intro text fades in and fades out. So after that, we then go to frame 300 and then we can set the alpha to zero and it will fade out. Then we can press the record button once again to stop, head to project, click on that splash fade and click on that loop time and let's press play. Now this introduction of this splash screen will work, but the game itself will not. Reason being is because we're not able to click anything because this is still active. So we now need to create a script which will allow us to continue the game and start the audio and just carry on as normal. So let's go to our scripts folder. Let's right click, create, C sharp script. We'll call this intro. So this is just the quick introduction sequence to our game. So let's open it up in Visual Studio. So what objects do we need here to make all of this work? Well, firstly, we need those two UI objects. So let's go public game object splash white. Next public game object and splash text. And finally, we're going to need that background music to begin playing, aren't we? So we're going to need public game object BGM starter semicolon. And remember, because we're not actually dealing with the audio source component with this background music, we're just turning it on. It doesn't need to be an audio source variable, just a game object one. So much in the same way as we've done previously, we're creating a sequence. We need to use a coroutine for this sequence as well. So that means that if we say uh, down here, I enumerator, remember not enumerable, I enumerator splash start 
open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now our sequence lasts exactly five seconds, but I want the music to start after four seconds. So as it's fading into the game, I want the music to start. So yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and that's going to be four. At that point, the next thing in our sequence is going to be BGM starter dot set active, and that's going to be true. Semicolon. Now we need to wait one more second for that white splash screen to disappear completely. So that's also going to be yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and in brackets, one. At that point, we do then need to turn off at least the splash white. It may not matter too much about the splash text, but depending on how big it is, it is still active on the screen, and realistically, we could do with not having it active on the screen. So I am going to turn it off here with the splash white. So splash white dot set active and in brackets false and splash text dot set active and in brackets also false. And next, what we need to do is we need to get rid of void update because we don't need it. We don't need the annotations either. We do, however, need to start the coroutine right here. So start coroutine and in brackets, the name of that coroutine that we've just written. If yours is splash start, just like mine, it would indeed be splash start. If yours is different, just make sure you have the right name there. Open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon and save. So this short script will control the little splash screen introduction to the game and allow us to play the game normally after it's finished. So let's head back into Unity. Remember, this has to go on our settings. So drag and drop intro onto the settings. And we just need to set those three variables. So splash white is the splash image. Splash text is the intro text. And BGM starter is BGM. I'm going to save that now and press play and see all of this work as intended. Cool. And there we go. Let's see how far I can get low. Hey, I got that one. Well done, Jimmy. And hi. Wow. I'm doing quite well here. I am impressed. Oh, there we go. Incorrect. So every time that we, uh, you know, close the game out, restart, you will just get that quick little intro sequence. And this can be a logo if you want to. It can be anything you want. You can do it in whatever order you want. It could be any color you want. It doesn't have to be white. It could be black. It could be red. It could be green. Anything at all. So up to this point, that's pretty much the development of that simple game done. And I would hope that you guys have taken it a bit further, made it look prettier than what I've done, you know, refined those mechanics, um, made it better, made it look awesome. And I always love to see what people have done. Uh, when creating things from these tutorials. So next tutorial will be the last one and we'll be looking into some of the settings. We'll be uh, quickly exploring how to build it and I'll tell you where you can go from there for further development advice, tips and tricks. So until that next tutorial, which is the last one, thanks very much for watching guys.